Hey everyone, welcome back to Cowboy Survival. I'm Richard, and today I thought what we would do is talk about my get home bag. My situation is a little bit different than most of you. Um, I don't live in a rural situation. I don't work 25 miles away from home. I actually only work about three miles away from my house. And so I, my needs would be a little different than some of the others that might have to hike for 24 hours. I'm gonna need about a two hour period, depending on the situation, to get from where I work to home, uh, given that I might have to detour around some uh, areas. And I'm gonna do a video where I actually do the walk from work to home, and I show you some of the things that I would look out for, some of the risks that I might see. But today, we're just gonna look at what's in my bag that I carry. Now, I'm gonna use this Rebo bag that I got off of Amazon. And uh, it's got a chest belt, uh, a waist belt, and a chest strap. Uh, it's also, um, so I can do those. Uh, the bag itself, uh, with everything in it, only weighs about uh, 13 or 14 pounds, so it doesn't weigh very much. I can walk all day with this bag. Um, and it's right now built for moderate weather. It's not put together for really cold weather. For cold weather, I need to add a couple things to it. Um, and I've actually got some extra things in there that I need just in case the situation arises where I can't get home uh, when I want to. So let's take a look at what's in the bag. The first thing I think I want to look at before we get into the bag is the bag itself. So this bag is from Rebo. So this is about a 40 liter bag. So it's a little bigger than you might need for a short hike, but I like having a lot of extra room in there. I don't like the bag being crammed so full I can't find stuff. So there's a lot of space still in this bag. Uh, it's got a lot of straps, straps and things on the, on the outside. Uh, we're going to look at this bag in detail. As I said, it's got both a, a waist belt and a chest strap, so that's nice. Um, it's got some straps on the bottom. You see I've got a little blanket uh, strap to the bottom of this thing. And I've got some things on the outside of the bag. Uh, and we'll show these close up. Uh, I've got here, I've got, got a pocket knife, I've got a radio. Uh, I don't have anything on the other side yet. Um, but I'll talk about that because there is something I'm going to get to put on that side. Uh, over on this side, on the, on the waist belt, I've got my multi-tool uh, that's attached and we'll take a look at that as well. So, uh, let's take a closer look at the bag and then we'll take a look at what's inside of it. So here it is. This is the Rebo 40 liter 3 day pack it says. So. Obviously, I don't need a bag for three days for this purpose, but I like the bag, as I said, because it's big enough to carry everything I want and still have extra space for anything else I might want to throw in there. For example, if I'm wearing a jacket and it gets hot and I want to stuff that jacket somewhere, I've got space in here to put that jacket and take it off and, and still carry it and not have to ditch it. Uh, things about the bag. First of all, it's very heavy duty uh, material. Uh, it comes, I got it in black. If you've seen my med kit bag, you'll see that the med kit I have is exactly the same backpack as this, but I've got it in desert tan. This one is my black bag for my get home bag. Um, it's got molly down on the front. It also has molly on the sides, as we'll see. Up here, it's got Velcro, so you can attach Velcro, you, the little patches you can get and put on there. Uh, I've got in my car a personal IFAC pouch, uh, personal first aid kit pouch that I would attach to this um, before I head it out. Um, and I would have that attached right to the front of the base of my bag. Now at the bottom, as I said, it's got straps and I've, I've talked about those before as well. Uh, at the top, it's got a really sturdy handle. Um, I usually leave this thing just hanging by the handle in my storage room um, when I'm not in the truck. Uh, and I keep attached to this one of these um, paracord bracelets. I like these things. They're kind of nice. They lots of paracord. That's got a little fire starter with it. Um, something you put on your wrist uh, when you get going. So I go ahead and I just leave this attached to the handle of my bag. Now the back of the bag is kind of nice. Uh, let's take a look at that and look at the items on the bag. First of all, uh, the shoulder pads are very sturdy. Uh, they do come with mesh on the back and padding so that uh, foam padding so that it'll air out. And you won't get a whole lot of sweat built up on that. In addition, you got the, the padding here as well, right? Now it's got a pouch back in here um, where you can put a water bladder or something else. I keep um, my map in here. Um, uh, so uh, that's what I keep in, in that pouch, but you can put, put a lot of things. I just use it as a match pouch. I don't generally carry a water bladder for this kind of purpose. Um, so that's what the shoulder straps look like. Um, it's got a little, so a couple of D-rings here. If you wanted to hang something from that, you could as well. As I said on the side, um, it's got uh, the, um, uh, the web. Before I get to that, on my belt, I keep my uh, Gerber 
um, multi-tool. So I've got a little Gerber truss multi-tool here. Um, uh, maybe it's more tool than I need for this purpose, uh, and it does add weight to my pack, but I like the multi-tool uh, that comes with this. I like this truss, and so I just keep it in the little patch, and I keep it on my waist belt of my bag. Um, I like waist belts. The waist belt will take weight off of your shoulders and put it on your hips. You can carry a lot of weight on your hips uh, very easily, uh, and it doesn't pull down your shoulders all the time. So on this side of the bag, um, is, you can see it's got some webbing on it. I don't have anything attached to this yet. I do plan on buying a, um, a pouch uh, that I saw on Amazon that I can buy and fit a Nalgene bottle in. So I'll be adding that to this side of the pouch. You notice it also has compression straps on either side of the backpack. Uh, one up high, one down low. Uh, so you can, you can use the compression straps to, to compress down your pack so it doesn't flop all over the place. And it's got those over here as well. I carry down in this pouch, and it's just simply in this, this little snap pouch, a uh, pocket knife. Uh, this is a pocket knife that you guys have seen me demonstrate before. Uh, it's just from Craftsman. Very simple little flip knife, uh, work knife. Um, it just comes in very handy to have a nice little pocket uh, knife that you can uh, do utility stuff with. So that's a nice little utility knife. It has a little uh, uh, belt clip or pocket clip. You can take that off if you wish. Um, I leave mine on there. Uh, again, I don't mean know where I got this little pouch thing. that can, I've had it laying around the house. It was in black, so I attached it. Up here I have a radio. Now, I carry a radio with me um, uh, when I have this backpack with me because if, if comms go down, if, if your cell phone towers go down, you have to have a way to contact your base or your home. Um, I will be replacing this radio. This radio is supposed to be uh, up to 20 miles. I can promise you it doesn't do 20 miles. I can't even get this radio to reach from my work to home. Now part of that is because where I live it's very hilly and in addition uh, I've got lots of trees and buildings between me and my place of work. So this radio has a tough time uh, getting over those distances. I need to get a better radio. I wanted to include it in this video oops, just um, so you can see you know, how I might attach it to my bag. So I just take the clip on it and if I can see it, uh, I'll just take that clip and well, I'm having trouble here, aren't I? There we go. Uh, just attach that back to the bag. Um, it does not have a radio clip on the shoulder harness. I wish it did. Um, the shoulder harness does not have molly. It's got vertical molly uh, straps that you can attach, but it doesn't have the cross straps. So I couldn't attach this, just put it onto my... That's one downfall of the bag. Now the bag's going to have four compartments. It's got one down here, one up here, a middle pocket, and a big pocket in the back. And we're going to look at all four of those pockets and what I keep in those. So let's take a look at the four pouches I have here and what's in there. We're going to start with the top pouch here, move down to this pouch, then we'll look at the very back pouch, then the last thing we'll look at is the middle pouch. Um, so in this top pouch, I've got several things here. First of all, I've got a pair of gloves. These are cobalt gloves. I just got these at Lowe's. Fairly inexpensive, fairly good, sturdy, I think good work gloves. Something to protect my hands. Um, also, close sells the mechanics gloves, which are really good, but they can be a little pricey. So one thing I would suggest is uh, look at Christmas time. Uh, I saw got a pair of mechanics gloves at Lowe's on, in a sale bin one year. They had all their mechanics gloves for $10. I, that was an incredible price. So look for those. In the meantime, these cobalt gloves are just fine. Uh, they're really sturdy. They work really well, and I really like them. Now, in addition to that in this bag, I've also got a headlamp in this top compartment. This top compartment is the things I'm going to need immediately when I start my journey home, uh, things I want to be able to get to quickly. So I've got a headlamp. Now, I may not need this if I'm heading home in the middle of the day, but if I'm heading home at night, this might be a nice tool to have. Um, but I keep it there uh, so that I get to it quickly when I need it. And this is just a little expensive, inexpensive. Hey, it's a little energizer light. No, no need to put anything too expensive. Remember, this stays in your car. You don't want stuff to get damaged. Um, I also have a little key ring, utility key ring. And right now what I've got on it is I've got a little quick release key ring in case I want to attach something. I keep a uh, handcuff key. I don't know that I need one, but it was kind of cool. So I keep it anyway. And then I've got a little canister of pepper spray that I would have. Now, you're going to have to replace this every now and then. This one expires in December of 2026, so it's good for a while. But if you have pepper spray, you want to check it for its expiration date and replace it as necessary. This is a real small canister. I just flip that little switch right there. I press the button, and I can have pepper spray, uh, a non-lethal kind of self-defense. 
I also have in this, I have a, a small knife that I carry. It's a little neck knife. Um, at least it's advertised that way. I got this. This is a Holtz Claw knife. It's a really nice quality knife. Um, my complaint with this knife isn't about the knife. My complaint with this knife is about the sheath. This Kydex sheath is so tight, I, it's really difficult to get the knife out of there. It, when it's in there, it's in there really good. You have to yank down on your neck really hard, which is a pain in the neck. Um, you have, or you have to, if you had this attached to this little belt loop here, if you had this attached to your um, uh, belt and you try to pull this thing out, it's going to pull the whole sheath with it. It's not going to stay there. Um, uh, now, you can put this knife in part way. Um, first sort of click and it's going to stay it's not going to come out and it comes out really easily but if you put it in there hard enough to feel that click okay that's in there really solid you're not getting that out and to get it out i have to grab the sheath and pull and i think that's dangerous because if i happen to have my finger in the wrong place i could really slice my finger badly so you have to be really careful with this knife i may be replacing it i haven't decided it also comes with a little uh, ferrocium rod uh, attached. Um, now, it's supposed to stay in this little loop, but mine falls right out. I, you know, so I just attached it to the lanyard. Um, but it, it sparks. I mean, there's, you know, I can scratch this up, and then I can get a nice spark out of that. Well, let's try it again. See, I can get a spark out of that, no problem. Um, so that knife isn't bad. It's, it's a nice little knife. I'm not sure I'm totally pleased with it. I've, I have sent, sent the company a message. I haven't heard a word back from them, um, but maybe they will after this video. Who knows? So I keep that in there. And then finally, I keep in here a bandana uh, uh, because bandanas are great for uh, moisture, for putting around your neck, for putting on top of a wound. It would be used for a lot of things, covering your face in case there's smoke or something you have to get through. The bandana is a really useful tool. So let me put those things back in here. And then what we'll do is we'll look at the next section of the video. So, what do I keep in this bottom section of my bag? Well, uh, first of all, this, this section only unzips halfway, so I don't have to release my compression straps to open this section as far as it'll open. It'll only open this far. Um, now, what do I keep in here? I keep uh, some utility things, some administrative stuff in here. So I've got an ink pen. Uh, I also have a Sharpie. Uh, and I've got a pad of the um, uh, paper that's all weather paper. I have, also I just happen to have it, so I stuck it in here, a little bitty CVS Pharmacy first aid boo-boo kit. Uh, it's got some band-aids and things in there, so I can get to it really quickly rather than have to get into my trauma bag. I also keep in here an extra pair of glasses because, as you see, I wear glasses. So, an extra pair of glasses with sunglasses attached um, is really important. I've got an extra pair of sunglasses in there as well. Um, then, what I've got in this, I've just got a couple of other things. I've got some zip ties because you never know when you can need those. I have a little chemical light, um, uh, Coleman glow stick in case I'm at night and I need to light something up with a glow stick. I keep that in there as well. And then finally, I have a hank of some paracord. I have a more paracord in another section of the bag, but this is just some quick paracord I could get to if I needed to. So that's what I keep in that section. Not a whole lot. There's more room. I can put more stuff in there if I needed to. But again, remember, that's part of my theory here. I want a bag where I can put stuff in it really quickly, um, uh, and I don't have to repack the whole thing and get scientific with the packing. I've got plenty of extra space in the bag to do what I need to do. So the next thing I'm going to do is go into the back section of the bag. And to do that, I'm going to have to release the clips. So release my compression clips so I can open this bag. This bag does clamshell open, uh, so that's really nice. Um, long section. It opens all, as you can see, it opens all the way down the side. Um, and so I'm going to open this bag up. Um, now, one of the things I've got is because the way I've got this thing um, uh, underneath my uh, pocket knife, I have to thread this back through in order to open this bag. So what do I keep in this bag? Well, let's look in this first section here. Um, in this first section up here, I just keep a couple of baggies. This baggie is just some uh, personal uh, uh, hygiene stuff. I got a toothbrush, toothpaste, some chapstick, 
uh, thinks it was a little bitty bar of, of uh, uh, um, soap from, um, from a hotel, some wet wipes, just a little things, personal hygiene bag, that's always a good thing to carry with you, to brush your teeth, wash your hands, whatever. This is my coffee bag. Um, uh, I've got Propel in there, I've got tea, I've got some coffee, uh, you know, I got a little hot chocolate, I don't know why I don't drink hot chocolate because I'm diabetic, uh, but it's in there. I got a, I got a couple of uh, protein bars in there, so just a quick snack pack um, of, of uh, uh, peanuts, uh, some, some protein bars, some coffee, some comfort drinks, just to keep me comfy on in case I want to rest and get something. Now, uh, let's look in the second half of the bag, the different pouches in here. Uh, so the first thing here, this is my little electronics kit, and I have several things in this. Uh, in this electronics kit, I've got a couple of um, uh, power cords, uh, and that's because I also have a power bank in here that we'll look at in a minute. I've got some extra AAA batteries uh, for my headlamp, and also some extra AA batteries. I um, don't know why I've got the AA's in there, but I've got them. I also have a charging plug, uh, charging block for my phone. Uh, if I go to a new phone that requires a uh, USB-C instead, instead of the lightning, I would obviously change that out. That's just a little bag. Again, I could put more stuff in there. It's not chocked full. Um, I've got in this little green bag, this is my little fire kit. Not a whole lot in this fire kit because I don't expect to stop and have to make a fire, but in case I did, I've got some stuff. I've got some stormproof matches. Um, I've got a couple fire starters in here. Um, I'm going to do another video on how to make some homemade fire starters that I think it's a really cool, fun thing to do. Uh, you might want to do it just because it's fun, right? Not because you really need it. And the ones I'm going to do, you see these little um, uh, uh, cotton uh, wipes and rounds that you can get at, at Kroger or Walmart or anywhere. Um, they're usually for makeup removal. They make really great fire starters because you rip them apart, there's carbon fi or cotton fiber in there that lights really easily. Um, I've got some uh, other stuff. I don't even know what that's a little sewing kit, some Q-tips. Uh, here's some more storm matches here. Um, uh, got a uh, uh, Bic lighter um, with some. Uh, uh, here's my. Well, come on, light. Don't want to light. It's a little breezy out here. There it goes. Um, I got some some duct tape attached to it. I got a little some magnesium um, just in case I really need to start a fire fast, and a couple other things. Not really anything major, just a real small, um, useful little fire kit. Uh, I don't even have in this particular fire kit um, a ferrocium rod. I probably ought to add. Actually, I do have one. It's in a different pouch. Um, uh, we'll see the ferrocium rod in a moment. So uh, I've got this stuff here in my fire kit. Oh, we'll put these matches away. I don't know why I've got two boxes of those. I don't need but one. Um, then I've got uh, another pouch here. This is my tool pouch. Um, and uh, uh, so what do I have in my tool pouch? Well, let's take a look here. I've got, I've got more paracord right here. Um, so, and I got quite a bit of paracord there in case I need it. Paracord's always very useful and it's very light. You can carry a lot of it. In this little tool pouch, I've got a knife sharpener. Uh, don't know if I'd really need a knife sharpener for a short walk home, uh, but I've got one. Uh, I've got a little screwdriver tool here. The end screws off and I can put in little screwdriver bits in there for different kinds of screws. A uh, little lanyard thing I could put around my neck or hook to my bag if I need to. It's got a, got a thermometer on it. It uh, says right now it's about uh, 64 degrees out here, something like that. Um, and it's on the back side, it's got a little compass. Um, so if I needed to find my way, but I know my way around this area. Again, I'm only three miles from home when I'm at work. I don't know if I really need a big heavy compass uh, for this bag. I would have one to get in a bug out bag, but I don't necessarily need a heavy compass in this bag. Um, I also have a silcock wrench. That's always useful if I'm trying to get water along the way and uh, there's no water. Remember, even if the water is off, if you turn on an outside faucet, there's water in the building, in the pipes that are in the building that'll probably drain out and you can get some good water out of that. Finally, I have my ferrocene. I told you I had a ferrocene rod in there somewhere. Probably ought to add that to my fire kit. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to add this ferrocene rod down into my fire kit where it sort of belongs. And then what else I have in here? Uh, the other thing I've got in here is I've got a little tube of flex glue. Um, glue. This, this flex glue stuff is really good stuff. If I needed to glue something really uh, fast, I could do it um, and fix something along the way. So there I go with that. So I'll put these things back in this little pouch. Um, and I'll have all the things I need there. So um, uh, again, my silcock wrench goes back in, uh, my screwdriver pin goes in there, and my knife sharpener goes in. I picked that knife sharpener up 
at Outdoor uh, it's from uh, WorkSharp. I picked it up at, at uh, Bass Pro. Um, real cheap. It's like, I don't know, $7.95, something like that. It's a real nice little knife sharpener. Um, I don't know that I really need it in this particular bag, but it doesn't weigh anything, just a couple ounces, so it's not like it adds a lot of weight to my bag. Um, uh, now, I carry some tent stakes. Now, why do I carry tent stakes? In case I needed to stop and build a shelter. Let's say this, it was a horrible, horrible storm, and I couldn't get into a building. I need to build a little shelter. Uh, I could build a little shelter with my poncho, um, and so I have some tent stakes just in case I might need them. Uh, this is a, a, a terami, I guess it's pronounced. Um, uh, poncho. Uh, it's not bad. It's it's about 84 inches by about 55 inches, I guess. Um, it's a little short. It comes to about mid uh, uh, mid uh, shin for me, just below my knees. Um, uh, I, I've ordered one um, that's supposed to be better from uh, Act Fire. That's supposed to be a lot longer uh, and wider. It's, it's like 90 inches by 60 inches, and I think that'll serve my purpose better for my bug out bag, but for my get home bag, this is great. In addition, if I didn't want to pull this one out, uh, just save this for shelter, I keep in my car a really nice Stearns um, uh, heavy duty poncho. Uh, I bought it years ago when I uh, was actually going to a golf tournament and I wore that thing and I wore it, uh, I've, I've worn it recently. It's a nice big heavy poncho and it covers a lot and I'm not going to get wet at all in that thing. It's, it's, so I could, I could grab that one out of the truck if I really needed to. I keep a, um, a uh, little camp stove cup here, along with some fuel and a little camp stove uh, from uh, Extremis. I demonstrated this in another video. It's a really nice little camp stove, works really well. I can take this fuel canister, set it upside down, or I can actually set it right side up. Doesn't really matter. It fits either way. Um, and I can put this in here with it. And I've got my cooking if I needed to stop and cook. Uh, this is a little dry bag uh, that just has some clothing in it. Uh, I've got actually all I've got in there. I've got a t-shirt, I've got a pair of socks, and I've got a toboggan in there. Um, always have a clean pair of socks with you. Now, what do I have in this bag, this pouch here? And this pouch here is I keep a towel. I carry a towel with me just about everywhere I go because you never knew, know when you're going to need one. I've got some uh, wet wipes, which you never know if you're going to need to you know, use wet wipes, right? Enough said. Um, I keep a couple of small Ziploc bags. In addition, I keep a large garbage bag. In there, you never know when you're gonna need a large. Uh, that's a 40-gallon bag right there. Um, uh, and then I also keep a battery bank in here. Uh, and just as soon as I pull it out, it starts charging, right? Um, so this is a, a pretty good-sized battery bank. It's got, uh, let's see, how many milliamps is this? Uh, this happens to be um, 1,600 or 16,000 uh, milliamps, almost 17,000 milliamps. So this would be great for recharging my phone um, if I needed to. So I've got that there. So that's what I keep in that little pouch. Again, easy stuff to get to, uh, but stuff that's kind of loose and I don't really have a, a pouch for it. So again, there's still room in this pouch for more stuff. I, when I put this stuff in here, um, I actually still have room for more stuff. Um, I can put my tool bag down here. Um, and I put this bag in. I got this, my, this bag. I can put this in the middle. And I've, I can zip this up and I've still got more room for more stuff in there if I needed to. So let's look at the, let's put these back in there as well. And I'm gonna get, I'm, I saw a neat thing on, on the internet recently for these. Um, Cause you always worry they're gonna poke a hole in your per, in your uh, pack or something else. I got to think, it, I, got, I saw a video and a guy had bought him a leather knife sheath and put these in his leather knife sheath and kept that in the back. I thought that was clever and I'm gonna get me one of those uh, to keep these stakes in, um, to protect them and to protect my pack and the other things that are in here. Now. Let's look at this middle section. This is the section that some may argue that I really don't need, um, but I've got it anyway. And as you're gonna see, there's a lot of space in here. This is my food section. I don't know that I really need this, but it was kind of fun. I did a video putting together a, a homemade MRE and I thought I might as well put it in my backpack. So here it is. I've got, um, I got these utensils from uh, Walmart, I think, uh, somewhere really, really inexpensive. Uh, I got a single walled uh, water bottle here. I'm gonna replace this with a better water bottle. As I said, I'm gonna try to add a Nalgene bottle to the outside. Um, uh, I would probably grab some water bottles from the office as I was heading to my truck to get this bag if I couldn't drive home. Um, I've got here my um, uh, life straw. Uh, so this is what I would use to, to filter water. Though I might add, instead of this life straw, what I might add is a um, uh, 
something like a, a Sawyer um, squeeze or a Sawyer mini, something like that, into this bag, which would be nice. And then here's my uh, day's worth of food. I don't know that I need this in this bag. Again, this is just to get home three miles, right? How hungry am I going to get in three miles? But I thought I'd get the bag and bring it along anyway. Um, just put it in the bag because uh, I've got lots. I got a full day's worth of food in this thing, um, and I, if I had to, if something happened uh, and I couldn't get, maybe it's a snowstorm, I couldn't get home in the snow and needed to hole up somewhere for a while. I'd have some food that I could cook. Um, all I would need is some water for this. Somebody did point out in one of the comments that, that what I've got in here is going to require quite a bit of water because I do have ramen noodles and I've got some other uh, uh, freeze-dried stuff in here uh, that would require like grits, um, instant grits, you need water for that. Um, but all those things could be done very easily um, uh, to get that water uh, somewhere, I believe. Again, I'm going to have water with me because I'm going to grab water as I leave uh, the building. So that's what I have in my get home bag. Uh, again, this all comes to about 14 pounds. Um, and I could certainly lower it if I got rid of the blanket. If I got rid of the, the food, um, my, my bag would be much less weight. But I think I've got everything here that in whatever emergency I need, I can get home. And that's the most important thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed the journey through my get home bag. Um, as I said, it weighs about 14 pounds. Um, that's certainly low enough weight that I could carry this all day long. Uh, I've hiked a lot in my life and I've carried this bag around. I know I could uh, carry it with no problem. Um, again, this bag I got from Rebo. Uh, it's a big bag. I've got extra space in it. Uh, for instance, if it was winter, like I mentioned, um, I could stuff more things or have more winter clothes in here because I have enough room for them. Um, so this bag, can, can, I can expand the contents as I need to um, for the weather. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you liked the video, please click the like button below. We'd love to have you uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. We'll see you soon on Cowboy Survival.